<laughs> How was your long weekend? It was good. It was very relaxing. I feel like since I had such a hectic week last week, um, having a three-day weekend felt like I had five days. <laughs> it's been in the surgical cap all day so I just wanted to turn on the camera and talk about how today went it was actually a pretty wild day heart itself is a pump it sends blood to the rest of the body but it requires blood flow itself as well so we have something called coronary arteries that supply blood to the cardiac muscles and when you have blockages to these muscles you don't have the oxygen supply to the heart which is a problem because depending on the extent of it it can lead to a heart attack even if it's partially occluded it can still lead to chest pain there are different ways of managing this but uh, these interventions are divided into medical management and surgical management. For medical management, you put them on different medications like beta blockers, calcium channel blockers. And for surgical management, you have PCI, which is percutaneous coronary intervention, where you put metal stents inside the vessels so you can uh, kind of keep them open. And there's also CABG, which stands for coronary artery bypass grafting, where you harvest vessels from other parts of the body and connect the distal end to the point past blockage so that the blood flow is maintained. So there are different vessels you can use for grafts. One of them is internal mammary artery, which are the vessels that run underneath the rib cage. The left internal mammary artery is called a gift of God for cardiac surgery because it's located in such an ideal place and with these grafts, when you divert the blood flow to the heart, you need extra blood vessels to supply the tissue. And the intra internal mammary artery has lots of collateral arteries that can still supply oxygen. There's also radial artery, which is an artery that runs in your forearm. You also have saphenous vein in your leg. These three are the main graft options for cabbage. So going back to what happened today, we had two cases of cabbage, and during the first case, uh, we harvested a saphenous vein in your leg. Um, and I actually got to close the skin incision by doing subcuticular suture. Do you guys know what's crazy about this? There is this wonderful surgical assist that I have worked with a few times over the last couple of weeks. So she was supervising me when I was suturing, and we like to joke around, and I make a full out of myself all the time and when I was finished I thanked her for her supervision and uh, for guiding me through the process and then the cardiac surgeon asks me do you know which cardiac surgeon did the first case of heart transplant in BC and I said is this someone I know and he said yes and I said is that you Dr. so-and-so who's my preceptor and then everyone started laughing and told me that it was done in 1988. So my preceptor was probably a toddler back then. But it turns out it was the surgical assist who helped me with the leg suture. So she's the one who did the first case of heart transplant in BC. Isn't that just crazy that I had no idea and she turned out to be this legendary person? I'm still mind blown. Okay, so that was the first case. And then I met with the resident for a teaching session because he said he wanted to teach me about aortic dissection. So I read up a little about aortic dissection during lunch so that I had something to say if he um, asked me questions. And of course he did. He was like, tell me what you know about aortic dissection. <laughs> Aorta is the main vessel second case started at 3, it was another cabbage. So I was working with the same staff and after we set up everything, my staff says to the scrub nurse, a night for Kayang. <laughs> I was like, wait, is he serious? 
and um, the nurse hands me the scalpel and I made the first incision, the first skin incision that goes from your sternal angle to the xiphoid, so down like this. And that was my first time making the skin incision. It's just like a historical day. I'm sure in the future I'll be making countless skin incisions, but this is my first day. You cut your skin and you have the sternum, which is the plate of bone that sits right underneath. And he explains how the bone saw works, different buttons and how you can change the setting. And then he hands me the bone saw and gets me to cut the sternum down the middle. I did that. He cut the sternum. So that was crazy. I will never forget this moment. So thank you guys for tuning in and I hope this was interesting. Maybe I'll make another video on what I thought about cardiac surgery. So stay tuned. Bye!